Welcome back everyone, Mindy here with you today and today's video is going to be showing you how you can make your picture changer scene a part of the picture changer window. A little bit of a mouthful, it's really easy to do once you kind of have the idea and get the hang of it and this picture changer die really does have so many options to it that you can create scenes for. I'm going to be starting off by coloring up all of my images. So I did stamp these all out already. These are stamped on the white cardstock from Lawn Fawn and I did use the jet black ink, which is Copic friendly. I used a few different stamp sets to create my scene. I have You Are Sublime and So Jelly. I'm also going to be using the Get Well Before and After, which is going to be using the Whale and that I'll have later on in the video when I start creating that picture changer scene. So I do have the colors listed here at the top of the screen. My starfish for the yellows, I did Y19, Y11, I'm sorry, Y19, Y15, and Y11. Um, I tried to have kind of a little clownfish going on there, so I used the same yellow combination. And for the orange, I did YR18, YR15, and YR12. My little lobster here, is R46, R27, and R14. And then I'm going to move on to my little uh, scuba diver here. So I have some dark blues, which is B18, B16, and B02. And I do kind of go over it twice. Sometimes I don't always go back to that B18 or the darkest color. I would just come back with the B16 and B02 just to really smooth out that blend since these are smaller images. I do usually like to try and use three color combinations to have that light, medium, and dark. Uh, so I have some highlights here. When it comes to the seaweed, that's gonna be a little bit different. I still wanted to have highlights, but there isn't a lot of room for blending. So I'll show you that in just a moment. I did use some of the previous colors like for the scuba mask and the flippers. I used some of the yellows that I had in the starfish. And then for the tank, I just did C6 and C4. And a little bit for the skin, I did E11 and E00. Then I'll go ahead and move on to the seaweed. So I'm starting off with the YG21, which is a really, really light color. I stamped multiples of them because I wanted to have them scattered throughout my sea bottom. And then I'm coming in with the YG17 and I'm just adding a little bit of a line on the bottom part of the leaf or the seaweed leaf just to kind of have that little bit of contrasting color. And same thing with these stalks of seaweed. I added the YG21 and just a line of the YG17 a lot of it's going to be layered on top of one another or hidden behind uh, the sea bottom banks. So I'm not too concerned with blending them out. And for my rocks, I did C6 and C4, which is another color I had used previously. For, uh, what is this, maybe a coral, I did RV19, RV17, and RV14. I don't typically blend those twice because pinks tend to bleed on me. So I did just go over that once and then I did color this little octopus, but I ended up not being able to use them. He didn't quite fit, but I left the coloring in here for you just in case. And that was BV08 and B, uh, V17 and V15. And I'm keeping just one side of them with the shadow. I didn't do anything super fancy with it. Then I can use the coordinating dies, line those up over the image. I'm gonna hold them in place with some purple tape and run this through my Gemini Junior. That is the die cutting machine I'll be using today. So here's a look at just all of those images all die cut out. I like to have mine done already so I can kind of arrange my scene as I'm going. Next, I'm gonna be creating the C bottom for my card. So I'm starting off with antique linen. And this is using a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. And it is a larger piece than I really need, but I like to kind of start a little larger because then I can always trim it down. I, I can't, you know, add paper back. I'd have to remake it. So I like to start a little bit bigger. 
and I'm just brushing that on. This is using one of the life changing blender brushes. I really been like using these lately just because it does give that really soft blend. This is all personal preference, whether you have uh, the regular blender brushes from Ranger or if you have makeup brushes, that's all total preference. These are just the ones that I have really been enjoying using, especially with this C bottom. I wanted a light blend. I didn't want anything super heavy or super dark. And then I'm going over that with Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. And I'm going to take that Vintage Photo and just kind of squish that down on my mat. Spritz it with some water. I'll stir that up with some uh, with my paintbrush and then flick that onto my C bottom And that's just going to add a little bit of texture uh, and character to my C bottom Once that's dried I'm going to take the stitched hillside border dye Line that up about where I want it how much of that darker brown I want to show and then I'll run that through my die cut machine So I'm slowly building up my scene and then I can just pop that out. And like I said, it didn't cut all the way across, but that's okay. I knew I wasn't going to be creating that big of a card. So I'll set that off on the side while I work on my sky. So this is also using the Bristol Smooth cardstock only because I know it blends really well with Distress Inks or Distress Oxides. So I'm starting off with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink, and this is using the Mini Cloud Stencil from My Favorite Things. I love adding clouds to my background. You can do pink clouds, orange clouds, whatever makes your heart happy. I, I went with peacock feathers because I thought that would match uh, the cardstock that I'm going to be using. So I'm just lightly going on there. I do kind of brush off on my mat first, so I'm not coming in super heavy. And you can see I'm starting off actually on the stencil, stencil and brushing that way I'm not getting a super harsh line around my clouds. And I didn't need to go down too far because a lot of that's going to be the ocean water. So for my ocean water, I am using some mermaid cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I'm starting off toward the bottom with Blueprint Sketch. And then I'll come in with the Peacock Feathers. It's kind of nice starting off with a colored cardstock. It has a little bit less work to it when it comes to the blending. And this is uh, kind of trial and error because I knew that the C bank would be covering part of that bottom, but I did want to have it darker towards the bottom and then get lighter as it goes. And then the peacock feathers would kind of blend in with that mermaid cardstock. So here I'm just kind of lining up, getting an idea of how far up I need to go because I don't need to use this whole sheet of colored cardstock. Next, I need to create my waves for my ocean. So I'm using the stitched waves border, lining up about how high it would go on my cardstock. Because that cloud background, that's going to be my main point. So I'm kind of figuring out how high I want that water to go. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I'll hold that in place with the uh, purple tape and then run that through my die cut machine. So I'm slowly building up my scene. This is what it's looking like so far. And then I'm bringing in my ocean bottom. So this is a great starting point for the scene. Now at this point, I'm done with the background and I'm done with the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach those two pieces together with my tape runner. I don't wanna attach my C bottom yet. So this is the Magic Picture Changer add-on actually. I'm using the add-on piece to die cut out that window. Now this is gonna depend on your die cutting machine. So I'm attaching these two pieces together because I want my window to cut out from both. So you see I'm just lining up about where I want that to be. I wanted the entire part to uh, centerpiece to be blue because then I can kind of use my Distress Inks to blend that out. So here, I really should have used a shim running this through because it didn't quite die cut all the way, but I couldn't find my metal shim. So I'm just kind of popping that out a little bit and then I'm going to come in with my scissors and just trim this down. So if you're using any other type of um, die cutting machine, you might want to check to see how thick you can go through it. Uh, like I said, I, I'm loving the Gemini. It, it cut it for the most part, but this is two pieces of cardstock. And then I just kind of am wiggling that out. And then I'm going to pop that center piece out, but I'm poking it through the back because that way if it rips, which it did, 
it's ripping the back and not my front part where all my work is. So this is what we're using both of these pieces for our card front and that's going to help make our magic picture changer scene kind of one whole complete scene like you would on a card. Now to work on our picture changer, I'm just using the white cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I lined up that picture changer window so I knew I had enough room to die cut. Lined up my whale from the Get Well Before and After stamp set and stamped that down. And then here is my healthy whale, my happy whale. And you're also going to need to create a mask. So I'm grabbing some masking paper from Simon Says Stamp and I'm just gonna stamp on both of those whales so I can cover my images when I'm doing my ink blending. And just to show you real quick, I cut mine kind of down a little bit smaller. So I have some, I can hold them separately. And I'm cutting actually kind of in the middle of that stamped line. That way I'm not gonna leave any white space in between my whale and my background. So you can see I'm turning the paper when it comes to to fussy cutting these out. And this was a fairly simple image. There were a couple small spots, which was no big deal, but I'm just following along and then turning my paper, not really turning the scissors. And I'll do the other one off screen. So normally I would ink blend my background first and then add the mask or remove the mask and do the coloring, but I actually had to re-stamp my masks because I stamped it on the wrong side of the masking paper. So I'm jumping right into the coloring here. I'm using B99, B97, and B95 for my sick whale. So he's kind of dark and gloomy. Um, I added the darker areas to like un under where the ice pack is and then the bottom of his belly. And then just adding a little bit of red in there on that thermometer. And for the ice pack, I'm actually going to use BV04, BV02, and BV00, leaving a highlight area towards the middle of the ice pack. And now for my healthy whale, I am using B97, B95, and B93. And you can really change up how this whale looks by how much of the darkest color you add. So if you don't take it out real far, you can make this a really light colored whale. Same thing with the um, unhealthy whale or the sick whale. It just depends on how much of the darker color you're adding and that can really change how your image looks. So I'll go ahead now and add my masks. Just get those attached over the image. This masking paper is really great because it's sticky on the entire side and it's not going to rip my paper when I remove them when I'm all done. So here I'm just bringing in that window to see about how much room I have to work with. And then I'm going to ink blend with the Peacock Feathers and Blueprint Sketch. I'm just keeping my colors consistent throughout the card. And this is going to match my background as well that I had created. So I started out with the Peacock Feathers, blending out a little bit. And then I'll come in with the Blueprint Sketch and just add it towards the bottom bringing it up just a little ways. And I do kind of look at my frame that I had created to see how much dark was towards the bottom to try and match that up as best as I could. So pretty happy with it. Maybe add a little bit of the lighter color, just depends on the background that you have. And I'll do the same thing with my sick whale because I want them both to look the same. I want that scene to be consistent. And you can do this with any of the stamps and dies that Lawn Fawn carries where you can create these entire backgrounds. And just by die cutting out the, the frame from the background, you'll be able to make one complete scene. Now you don't have to die cut out the waves like I had. If that's too much for your die cutting machine, you could always just stencil in a background. That would work too and just leave that whole back as stenciled clouds or stenciled in grass, something like that. So now I'm just removing those masks, these super cute whales, and then I'll attach the magic picture changer. This is the larger of the two because that's going to be the first thing that you see when you when the recipient sees the card. 
and then I'll take the smaller one and attach that over the window. I'm going to fold along the score lines. Now on these skinny lines, um, I kind of take my fingernails and push against the score line that's there. It's really kind of tricky. Now, like I said, I did use Bristol card, Bristol smooth card stock. Uh, and with that, if you look closely, it was kind of, the paper was kind of separating there at the, that top one. You can see I'm playing with it a little bit. It was kind of separating, which was really weird. I never had that happen before, uh, but I just kind of went with it. I'm working with it. I'm coming in with the score tape from Lawn Fawn, and I'm just going to add that to the inside and outside flaps of this skinny strip. So at this point, I'm just kind of hoping that it's still working out, even though my paper was cracking. Regular cardstock would not do that. I've actually just never had that happen before where it cracked like that. So I did remove the backing of that double-sided adhesive for the inside strips and sealed that down right away. Then I'm taking an anti-static powder tool and I'm just brushing that powder all over those slots, the front and the back, just to help make that move a little easier. And then I can take my smaller one, insert that through the slit that's cut from the top. And I'm taking those slots and just popping the front one into the back one. So just all four of those, I'm just going to pop that in the back. They're going to line up. You just kind of want to make sure you push that in real good. And you can kind of close that and give it a test run. Make sure that it's moving, which it is. It's really great. If it's not moving enough, just make sure that it's not getting stuck on any adhesive in the back from your double-sided tape. I'm just gonna straighten mine out a little bit. And you could always add a little bit more powder to them too before you seal it up. Make sure it doesn't catch on anything. And then I'll go ahead and add that strip on there to seal it down. And even though my paper was cracking, uh, it it held up great. I didn't have any problems with it. Everything worked out. It's kind of hidden in the back there, so no one's going to see it anyway. So now that everything is moving perfectly, my scene is working out, I'll go ahead and remove that backing and seal this up. Just make sure that all those slots are still connected. And it's working out great. So far, so good. Now this is the cover, so this is what's going to be a part of our scene. And I'm just making sure that nothing is sticking out or getting in the way. And then I can take some adhesive and I'm just putting it in the corners, going from the inside corner to the outside corner, and then attaching that right to the front. Now, if you notice, I die cut my frame wrong. You can see this, there's a little notch towards the bottom of my card. That's supposed to be at the top. <laughs> it, but you know, it was one of those days and the card still worked out. So even with my little oopses, I'm totally loving this card. I'm just adding this little tab at the top. This is also from the picture changer add-on. So the recipient knows to pull. And then I can start building up my scene. So this is the frame. I'm adding this to some uh, piece of peacock cardstock that I had cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. My ink blended panel, my scene, uh, I did go ahead and trim that down to four by five and a quarter. And then I'm lining the back of my picture changer with foam adhesive and I'm doubling it up so that there's plenty of room for uh, the pull tab to come up. And then I'm adding that right on top of the window where we had cut it out of. So it's just gonna blend right into the scene. It's gonna look complete and everything is moving great. I can get my fingers in there and move that around. So that's working out great. Now for the uh, ocean bottom, I started out by adding my foam tape to the entire piece, which was an oops. I didn't want to add it to the entire piece and I do double it up so that it matches my window that I had added onto the card. Uh, that top piece I didn't actually mean to add uh, because it's not going to line up. It's going to be um, not crooked, but there's going to be too much dimension in the one area. So I'm realizing that here, and I didn't want to add any more foam tape because there's so much to begin with. So thankfully I didn't push this foam tape down very well. And I was able to pick up that top part, which I can save for later. So now I just have that foam tape at the bottom, which is great because it's out of the way of the picture changer window. I'm just adding a couple strips off to the side. 
because my window frame isn't there. So that fit perfectly now. Like I said, lots of little oopses along the way, but I managed to still make it all work. A lot of work went into this card, so I didn't want to start over. Now I'm going to come in and I'm just adding in all of my images. So I'm creating my, my ocean bottom. I'm creating my scene. I'm adding the seaweed and the rocks. I'm going to add some seaweed behind that ocean bottom. I wanted to put that octopus back there, but I had pushed down on my foam tape so I couldn't tuck him in. And my little scuba diver is holding some, some medicine for the whale so that he feels better. And I thought that was so cute. And my fish is actually going to wear the nurse's hat, but I need to stamp that little cross on there. So I did use some, I think it was chili pepper ink. I'll have it listed down below in the description. So I stamped that on really quick. So that my fish looks like a little nurse. And then I did take for a sentiment. I die cut out this sentiment from the get well before and after stamp set. I use the fancy wavy borders. So I stamp the sentiment in clear embossing ink and then heat embossed with white embossing powder. And that is my final touch for the card. I'm loving creating these scenes. I cannot wait to make more. I have an idea for the turtle that I want to do. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and me showing you how you can make a complete scene using your picture changer die. All the supplies will be listed down below in the video description and on my blog as well. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll catch you next time.